Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ravi Ranjan and I am going to explain about the cell cycle. And today I am going to expel, explain about the molecular aspect of the cell cycle. First thing, cell cycle occurs in eukaryotic cells. The, the very similar phenomenon you will observe in prokaryotes also, but there is a big gap, big difference between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes and usually the proper phases we, you will observe only in eukaryotes and therefore we are saying that cell cycle is mainly studied for eukaryotes. Cell cycle it means a journey of a cell in which cell is going to complete their life cycle. Their life cycle begins with generally G0 phase which is a part of G phase. But before going to proceed all these things let us understand about the generalized view of cell cycle. See, all the cells are usually arrested in a particular phases and whenever needed, they start division. Whenever do not need it, they will be remain as such present. In our body, there are different type of cells. Some cells are continuously dividing, some cells are not dividing and some cells are divided whenever needed. So there are three type of cells. First, continuously dividing, second, divide whenever needed and third, those cells who are not divided. But all the cells will start their journey from a particular phase and there must be certain important aspect which all the cells are following then cells start their journey. Usually, the cell cycle is divided into two phases, one is called M phase and second is called interphase. M stand for mitosis and I stand for interface. M may be meiosis. So whatever the things occurs in the, uh, in the interfaces, it will be common for both mitosis and meiosis. But you remember that after mitosis, cell will start their journey again and again. But after meiosis, the cell journey is stopped. And that's why usually we are saying M stand for mitosis. So now study in detail. Mitosis is the ultimate aim of any cell if they want to participate in division. So I am going to talk regarding only two types of cell. Those cells which are continuously dividing and those cells which divide whenever needed, they follow the proper regulation of cell cycle. See besides M phase, the remaining phase is called interphase. It means this is the phase when cell is going to prepare for the mitosis. So interphase is nothing, it's a duration in which cell is going to prepare for the mitotic division. Now M phase is divided into three sections, G1 phase, S phase and G2 phase. Where G1 is the longest phase, then followed by S phase and then G2 phase. G1 phase is having several important role, but one important aspect of G1 phase is here you can find out G0 phase. It means the phase when cell will be arrested. All the cells are arrested in G0 phase until and unless they are not getting signal to proceed in the cell, they will be remain present in the G0 stage. So remember, all the non-dividing cells will be remain present in G0 phase. Later on, whenever needed, they will pass from G0 they will continue their journey from the G1 and reach to the S phase. Now, importance of G1. See, in G1, cell is going to prepare for the next phase that is S phase. That is, uh, as you know, in the S phase, replication occurs. So, all the replicative enzymes are formed in the G1 phase. So, basically in G1, transcription and translation occurs and all the proteins are synthesized which is necessary for DNA replication. Besides that, cell is also growing to reach their mother size. As you know, before G1, there is an M phase when cell is dividing. After division, the size of the cell is almost reduced to half. And then the size must be reached to their mother size, that is original size. Once cell will be achieved or reached to their original size, it means now cell is ready for the division. So all the cytoplasmic content, cellular mass and size is going to increase in the G1 phase and it is one of the most 
important and mandatory aspect to remain to proceed from G1 phase to S phase. So in short, we should say that in G1 phase, the cell is uh, preparing for the S phase and second, in G1 phase, transcription, translation occurs and third important thing is in G1 phase, the cell will be growing in their size or their, or their total biomass is increased so that the cell will start their journey. Now come to the S phase, that is the second phase. See, S phase is mainly for synthesis phase. S belongs to synthesis, it means DNA synthesis or replication occurs. So here in S phase, replication is going to occur. Then third phase is G2 phase where cell is again prepare for the, for the next phase that is mitosis. It means before mitotic division G2 must be needed, in G2 phase cell is preparing themselves. That is again transcription translation for the mitotic division. Besides this, their checkpoints are also present. So that I will explain later on. But in short, in G1 preparation occurs for S phase. In G2 preparation occurs for M phase. So this is regarding the generalized view of different roles of G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase. Whereas G0 is integrated part of G1 where cell is always present in the rest stage. So remember, I'll start from the G0. In G0, all non-dividing cells are present and most of the human cells are again arrested in the G0 phase only. It means why most, not all, because there are certain exceptions. Only Ugonia cells, that is especially ohm forming cells, they are present in the G2 phase uh, in their whole life cycle after the birth of the human being. But except that oocytic cells, rest all human cells will be remain present in the G0 phase. So you can say G0 is a resting phase where all non-dividing cells are present, but in the differentiated states. Now you can see the examples of liver cell. They are belonging to those type of cell which are divided whenever needed. It means as I already told you, cell are of three types cells who are always dividing like uh, those cells like RBC, WBC or you can say stem cells they are uh, they continuously divide continuous in the sense after exactly 120 days new RBC need to be formed and they form from stem cells only so after a duration continuously these blood cells are formed these are the part of the first one then second is those cells which divide whenever needed Example is liver cell. In the cells, cells will be remain present as such, but whenever needed, they will divide. It depends on their external reasons. It means some external signal will be received and then cell will start their journey. And there is there is a third type of cell which never divide. So say for example, neuronal cell or nerve cell and muscle cell, which are specialized and always arrested in the G0 phase. Now Come to the next one, frequency of cell division. See, some cells are dividing at very faster rate. Some cells are dividing with the mid rate and some are divided with the slower rate. See, if I am giving example of the embryo. Embryo is going to complete their complete cell cycle within 20 minutes. It means within 20 minutes they complete all the phases so it is very fast. If you think about the most of the cells in our body, including skin cells, they take 12 to 24 hours and standard is 24 hours. So our most of the cell is taking 24 hours to divide. Like skin cell is continuously dividing, they also take 24 hours to divide. The range of uh, skin cells are of various layers and various types. So there is a range of 12 to 24 hours, but most belong to 24 hours. The third is liver cell. They remain as such present whenever needed they will divide and obviously nerve cells and muscle cell who are never dividing. So let us start one by one about the points of the cell cycle that is control of the cell cycle. The first important part of the cell cycle is restriction point. Restriction point is a part of your G1 phase where cells are always arrested and cells are waiting for the growth factor. When cell will receive growth factor, it becomes influence 
and they are responsible to cross the cell from G1 phase to S phase. So remember, restriction point is the point where cell will be remain present and they are waiting for their growth factor. If growth factor will be received by the eukaryotic cells, then only they can proceed for the next phase, otherwise they will be remain as such present. Now after getting uh, growth factor, there is a triggering of the intracellular signaling uh, system and due to this signaling system, those type of proteins are formed which are influencing cell to pass from G1 phase to S phase or you can, you can simply say to cross restriction point. Say for example in most of the human being, when growth factor will be received, there is a signal transduction mechanism occurs and cyclin D is formed. This cyclin D bind with the CDK4 and this CDK4 cyclin D is responsible to cross the cell from restriction point and further in the journey of the cell cycle. Then next is uh, checkpoints. See there are different type of checkpoints. Mainly in most of the uh, books you will observe three checkpoints. In some it is mentioned four also but remember in most of the book they are mentioning three checkpoints G1 S checkpoint, G2M as well as spindle fiber checkpoint. In G1 S checkpoint, the cell divide, uh, but they decide to divide. See, G1 S checkpoint is present in the G1, between the G1 end of the G1 and S phase, where this is very important uh, checkpoint where cell is actually deciding to divide. It means cell will be remain present in the G1 and once everything is fine then they decide to divide. In G2M checkpoint that is uh, the next one next checkpoint then cell is again makes the commitment to mitosis because it is just before the mitosis division and there is a spindle fiber checkpoints where all the chromosomes are going to attach to the spindle fiber. Let us see the detail where it is located and what is the function. See first is G1S checkpoint. In the G1S checkpoint, which is present in the end of the G1 and initial of the S phase, in that particular region, see there are many factors which is important to note here. When cell will receive signal and all the conditions are normal, it means cell is influenced to move from G1 to S phase, DNA is also intact, then only cell is able to cross this checkpoint. So basically G1 checkpoint is also known as DNA damage checkpoint where the cell is checking the, about the DNA damaging activity. If DNA is damaged, cell should be remain present in the G1. If DNA is intact, then cell is able to cross from G1 to S phase. It means basically the role of G1S checkpoint is they will check whether DNA is damaged or not. If DNA is damaged, then this checkpoint do not allow cell to cross from G1 phase to S phase. Now come to the next checkpoint that is G2M checkpoint. Again in G2M checkpoint they will decide for the division, for the replication as well as damage. It means uh, suppose the cell is crossing S phase as well as G2 phase. During this period suppose DNA is again damaged then this G2M checkpoint will again check that whether DNA is damaged or not. If damage, they should remain present in the G2M phase checkpoint or this is also checking about the DNA replication. See here you might have seen that in S phase there is no checkpoint shown here. It means this, there is no specific checkpoint who is checking DNA replication at the end of S phase. In that case at the end of G2 phase the checkpoint is playing two role that is dual role. One, DNA damaging activity they will check and second they will check about the DNA replication. If DNA replication is completed then only it allows cell to cross from G2 phase to M phase. Now third is metaphase checkpoint. When the cell will reach to the metaphase then from metaphase to ana anaphase movement there is an important point that is alignment of cell. See remember all these chromosomes are aligned in a, in a particular fashion that is they align in a metaphasic plate. If they will align on the metaphasic pro pro plate properly then only the spindle fiber are able to pull themselves and after that there is a separation of 
the centromere or we can say separation of chromosome occurs in short i should say that here the checkpoint that is m phase checkpoint will check whether the chromosome is aligning on the equator or aligning on the mediterranean plane or you can say uh, the the center of the cell or not if it is arranged on the equator then only cell is aligning uh, themselves to cross from metaphase to anaphase so this is all about the uh, checkpoints as well as other things related to the cell cycle the detail of the cell cycle and regulation you can study in the next video thank you